The Seed of Hope, an essay from a book of essays and poems entitled Karn, by me, Cameron Miller. When the small blue flame of love crawls down the candle wick, the last glimmer of light fully within the closing lips of darkness, and despair is as close as the next breath, what keeps hope alive? When we can imagine edging toward our oldest moment, warmth receding from our fingertips and voices fading from the curvature of our ear forever, what keeps hope alive? Knowing that Earth, our island home, will one day cease spinning and even the explosive gases of our sun become an unseen mist in frigid space, what keeps hope alive? Begin with geology, evolutionary biology, and any other light of knowledge we can shine under the blanket in order to see the beginning of life on Earth. Three and three-quarter billion years of ago, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and there was as yet no life. The waters bubbled, swirled, and churned, mire thick with chaos and fever. Then something happened. In those festering shallows, a single cell appeared. Single-celled life, bacteria, millions and billions of them. For another billion years, until the planet itself was half its current age, life consisted of single cells roiling and broiling and living within the broth of creation, where <clears throat> wherever water moved and trickled and sloshed. Then... Then, two single cells, among all those other single cells, cast about in the swill for a billion years, danced together and became one. They sizzled and wriggled and then slithered into two again. Two brand new cells. For the first time, two cells had joined and become one then reproduced into two, and so the multiplication continued. Instead of a single-celled cell, cell life, it was now multi-celled life, hosting unique and varied DNA. Stunning. In the blink of eternity's eye, a sequoia tree now reached to the clouds like fingers of the earth grasping for stars. <clears throat> Soon, Triceratops rumbled through thick swamps of lush green. Before a light year could dawn, a furless upright animal harnessed fire, crafted tools, and launched the Hubble telescope. It is an indescribable magnificence compelling awe and wonder. Seeing this whole thing unfold, on screen through the magic of computer, or strolling through the best new high-tech museum of natural history, we gaze upon the incredible four billion years procession of life in all its spectacular diversity, and imbued with mystery and wonder, and we mutter a mildly impressed, huh. We witness this unspeakable splendor of the universe exploding and unveiling its wonders before our eyes. And we drive down the road eating french fries as if it was no big deal. When we should be trembling and shaking and making uncontrollable noises of amazement and awe, we barely notice. As the Polynesian saying goes, we ride a whale while fishing for minnows. <clears throat> We dare not ponder it, this astounding microbial birth of life ignited most likely from elements brought to our planet by a fragment of a dead star. To imagine we are actually stardust, that in our bodies we retain the material echo of a long dead star, should set our hair on fire. If we're honest, we cannot fully open our mind to to it because it's terrifying. We who are so incredibly small and fragile are adrift in such a small boat across an ocean of stars. Alas, amazement and awe 
are the seeds of hope, requiring nurture and care in order for hope to grow and thrive. So have courage, court awe, 